Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James and his special guest of top spiritual men and women will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. All righty, well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you what I was thinking about this week. I was thinking about religion. But I was just thinking about religion in terms of what I've been studying. And, and we just finished our advanced studies sessions. I was looking at recently about Orientalisms. And one of the things that in studying Orientalisms is that the major religions throughout the world especially in the East, their, their themes, their philosophies of all these religions have many of the same concepts. This is true about Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Muslims, all of them. They all have so much in common. Matter of fact, when I sat through the Christian church teachings and they were talking about the holy wars, they mentioned, the teacher just mentioned that, that uh, Mohammed just used a little bit of Christianity and a little bit of Judean and put the religion together. It's pretty wild. So, and even these major religions throughout the, the East, they all have lots of the Sermon on the Mount in them, mm. that, those types of teachings. And then, as we were sitting through the advanced series that we were in, we saw that the adversary, the devil, is not original in any way. He's not original in any way. He uses and, and, and takes what is available. And his number one thing is he wants to be worshipped like the Most High God. So he tries to pull people from the truth of God's Word. And he does that by setting up false or misleading religions, which is pretty simple to see as you we work God's work. So I was thinking about those thoughts and then I thought, well, what about all the the religion that's in America and all these churches and denominations, they all say that they have the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. They all say it. They all say very similar things. I thought we'd look and see a little bit about what Jesus said about it. Go to Matthew chapter 15. <coughs> Matthew Matthew 15, and in verse 1, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, And the scribes and Pharisees are the religious leaders of their day and time. And they said to Jesus, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But... He answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your traditions? Yep. This is like a versus. It's like the tradition versus the commandment of God. And you can see this throughout the Word of God. I want you to keep your finger here, and I want to go to Second Peter chapter 1. And show you something. Okay, in uh, Second Peter chapter one, in verse twenty, it says, "Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation." That word "private" can be translated "one's own." So, no prophecy of the Scripture can be of one's own, or one's organization, or one's group, club, or anything else. It can't be that. So the truth is not P.I. But religion is. Private interpretation. And then uh, in verse 21 it says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. See, the truth did not come by the will of man. But religion did and does. It did and does. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So, here's like 
The truth of God's word is truth. And what man adds to it is the religion. That's the religion. Personally, I don't, I'd like to get rid of religion in my life and grab onto as much truth as I can. That's what I like to do. So going back to Matthew chapter 15, and Jesus is putting these two things in there. He says, why do you transgress the tradition of the elders versus... Why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? See the two verses, they're like <coughs> against one another. And it says in verse 4, four it says, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother. And he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father, or his mother, it's a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. See, the tradition has just said, that commandment doesn't matter no more. And now what this is talking about, is talking about, they had this thing, Corban, which is a made-up thing by man. The religious leaders of Judea at that time said, if you are a prophet to the temple, if you can bring profit to the temple, money, talents to the temple, then you don't have to take care of your father and your mother. That was the, the standard. Uh -huh. To be a prophet to the ch temple, it's a gift. You don't have to take care of your mama and your papa no more. You can just be a little selfish, making sure you give a lot of money to the temple. You see, that's what th that tradition of men did at that particular time. And Jesus didn't like that. He says, gee, that isn't right. And that's what we're going to see as we look into God's word today. Verse 7 says, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. We, all the time, got to watch out for the commandments of men. The things that they'd like to add into the Word of God, the truth. The truth comes from holy men of God as they were moved by the Holy Spirit from God. The tradition of men say, well, we'll let you off the hook if you give a little money to the temple. There's, but there's more involved in that, as we'll continue to see as we read <coughs> But in vain they do this. It is just outrageous. Let's go to Mark chapter 7, the next book, and it expounds a little bit more on this record. Mark chapter 7. Then came together unto him, Jesus, the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem, and when they saw some of his disciples eating bread with undefiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands off, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. See, they cared more about what men said. But the word of God didn't come by the will of man. See that? Mm -hmm. And when... They come, and when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold, such as washing of cups and of pots and of vessels and of tables. And when the scribes and the, and the, the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not your disciples according to the tradition of? of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hand. 
He, being Jesus, answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as a washing of pots and cups and many other things, such things ye do. And then he goes on to say, And he said unto them, Full well, in other words, with full knowledge they did this. Ye reject the commandments of God. You could just say, They reject God, that ye may keep your own traditions. I want to go back to verse 6 and look at that word hypocrite. In Matthew, we use the word hypocrite. It uses the word hypocrite here. The word hypocrite means like it's a acting. It's like acting a part. They come up with an idea, a philosophy. This is what we're going to do. We're going to make everyone wash their hands and we're going to wash everything. And then they act. Just like you'd see a, a movie. Mm-hmm. I can act like anything. So they act this way. It's a, it's a show. It's a show. Then back to verse 9, it says, And full well, with full knowledge, you reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own traditions. For Moses says, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whosoever curses the father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, If a man shall say to his father or or his mother, it is Corban. That's what I was talking about. It's a gift. It's my. I'm putting God first. I'm going to give to the temple. I'm going to be a prophet to the temple, and I'm putting you ahead of my. I'm putting my service to the temple ahead of my father and mother. That's exactly what they're saying. It is a gift. It's a gift to God, and you guys do what you can by. Mm-hmm. Whosoever shall, thou mightest be profitable by, by me, he shall be free. It's just, that's what they're saying. So once you give to God, it's better. i got to share something else that just came to my mind. Do you know in the Bible it talks about sinners? They came sinners and publicans to see Jesus Christ. When it says sinners, it's not talking about someone who just sinned. It was actually a classification. They're classified as sinners. And what that really meant in their way of thinking was people that were unprofitable to the temple. See, they couldn't give. They couldn't help out the temple. They were sinners. They didn't do the work of God. They were sinners. And their work of God was the tradition of men. So they just classified these people as sinners. And they had no choice in the matter. Jesus said, hey, that isn't true. You know, (laughs) that's what Jesus, that isn't true. You guys are all right. So that's what's going on here. But the the religious leaders love to put people in a position where they were not blessed, where they couldn't be blessed. And who's being picked on here is the fathers and the mothers. Verse 12 says, and ye suffer him no more to aught for his father and mother, making the, the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things ye do. You just make it up and you do it. You know why they do it? It's always been the money. Through every century, every time, follow the money. Follow the money. Why is... Just follow the money. I don't want to get too far off. Verse 14 says, And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me and every one of you, and understand. Understand what's going on. There is nothing from without a man that entereth into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile a man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he had entered into the house from, from the people, the disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Don't you understand? 
do you not perceive that what sort of things from without entereth into a man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into his belly, and it goes out into the draught, purging all meats. And he said, that which cometh out of a man, that is what defiles him, defiles the man. From within of the heart of man proceedeth evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, murder, thieves, covetousness, wickedness, lascivious, uh, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil night, blaspheming, pride, foolishness. These evil things come from within and defile the man. So it's from in the heart that really defiles a man, not washing them. But I want to show you a little bit about women and the mothers and the fathers, okay? And I want to go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. Rebuke the, not an elder, but entreat him as a father. This is how we're to treat people, right? An elder is someone who's older, and it also can mean has more knowledge in the word than you, an elder. But entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. The elder women as mothers, the younger as sister with all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed. This is talking about women, right? But if... if any widow have children or nephews, let them first learn first to show piety at home and to acquire their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. See, we're, we're, we are to take care of our parents. Now, she that is a widow indeed, and then it's going to tell us what a widow indeed is, it's a destitute trusted in God, and continue in supplication and prayers night and day. But if she lived in pleasure, is dead while she liveth. These things give in charge that they may be blameless. blameless. But if any provide for, not for their own, especially for, their, for those of his own household, own house, he hath divided the faith and is worse than an infidel, and that means an unbeliever. See, people take care of their own families. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old. How old is that? Sixty. Sixty. Sixty years old. Having been the wife of one man, well reported of for good works, if she had brought up her children, if she had lodged strangers, if she had washed the saints' feet, if she had relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed after good works. These are talking about widows and deeds, but they were mothers. And we're to treat them highly because of the things that we just read. But... The religious leaders at that day and time thought, well, they didn't have to do that. There was something more important, and that was to make sure the temple was profited. They wanted to make sure the temple got the money. Go to Mark chapter 12, and in verse 38. And he said unto them, this is Jesus again, and he said unto them his doctrine, Beware the scribes which love to go in long clothing, and love salutation in the marketplace, and the chief seats in the synagogue, and in the upper rooms at feast, which devour widows' houses. You know how they devoured the women, the widows' houses? By the sons not taking care of them, saying, Corbin, we're going to take care of the temple first which is against the commandment of God. And look at this, the word hypocrite, the show, look at this. Beware of the scribes, because they love the good show. I'm adding some things. In long clothing, look at me. And love salutations in the marketplace, and the chief seats in the synagogue, 
in the upper room and in the uppermost room of the feast. And by the way, while we're doing that, we are doing what to the widows? Destroying them. Unbelievable, isn't it? Go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. What I'm looking at here is I'm looking at the show. Looking at the show. Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Likewise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thine arms, do not sound the trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do, the actors. Mm -hmm. They do it for the show. And do in the synagogue and in the streets that they may be have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand knoweth what the right hand does. That thy arms, and the word arm means good deeds, good work. It says when you do your good deeds, you do it in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee open. And look at the prayers. Look at how these are supposed to be done. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, the actors, the showboats are. For they love to pray in the standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition, just saying the same thing over and over again, as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speak. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your heavenly Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask them. You just ask them. This is what I need, God. You just talk. It's not for the show. When, when I asked people to pray today, it wasn't for the show. We just wanted to pray for what, what people needed to pray for. And then he goes on to talking about the Lord's Prayer, and we've been through that a lot. I want to jump down to verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites, you know, the showboats, of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, Anoint thy head, means wash up, and wash thy face, that they may appear not to fast, unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret. And the Father which seeth in secret will reward thee openly. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Luke chapter 20. In verse 46, it says something very similar that we've been looking at. It says, Beware of the scribe which desire to walk in long robes, and love greetings in the markets, and in the highest seats in the synagogue, and the chief rooms at the feast, which devour widows' houses, and show, that word show, hypocrites, make long prayers, the same shall receive greater damnation. The difference between a true walk with God and religion is a true walk with God is believing God's Word and, and living our lives according to what God's Word is. And religion is what man does to look good in front of other men. To look good, to put on the show. I do not believe that Christianity is a religion, but I believe there's a lot of religion in Christianity. And what we got to do is beware. Beware of it. And look out for the show, because people love to show. They love to, sh to put on the show of how good they are, how religious they are. But God seeth in secret. You have a heart for God. You ask God. And as you walk with God, 
beware of the word, beware of the tradition, beware of the show. If things are too showy, I take a step back. I need to know, is this what the Word says? And when I know it's what the Word says, then I can stand on it. But God has told us to study, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. We're to be sharp, and the adversary can be close. If I was to give you a counterfeit $10 bill that was as big as this table, you would say it's not a, it's not right. it's not going to fool me but if it was real close would it fool you so that's why we got to be sharp that's why we got to look at the word we got to see what's going on and go man this doesn't look right what's going on doesn't look right when that's the case then we take a step back and say no thanks and look at the time of Jesus Christ that one thing about not honoring their father and mother, what it did to people, to what it did to families, all so that the temple could be more profitable. And I believe the same things go on today. Well, dear God, thanks for your word, God. Thanks that we can learn some things here, God. And God, I thank you for, we can treat our mothers a lot better than they treated the mothers in the time of Jesus Christ. And God, I thank you for a wonderful day in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com for show notes. While there, sign up for our newsletter, grab the freebies, and check out all that Reverend Steve Janes has available. Steve has plenty to give, audio and video teachings, articles, blogs, and biblical study books, all there to help you continue to grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All keys to help you live the life you've always wanted to live.